So uh, just another uh, point to make about this Salem Sump large bore tube is that uh, after insertion you'll actually want to put in this um, anti-reflux valve. Unfortunately it comes in um, separate packaging so you just have to remember to put that in um, and you're going to want to put um, flush this smaller lumen with air first about 10 to 20 ml of air and then you're going to insert your anti-reflux valve oh, with the blue and in and it actually it looks a little bit odd but it actually just stays like this so this stays like this for feeding and if you're doing decompression as well um, just helps prevent the gastric contents from coming back up there so just to something to remember I think hopefully over time they start to package this with the tube itself um, but for now it's it's packaged separately um, so we will um, now give meds through our Salem sump tube. So just like with any um, med administration that we've done, we want to confirm that the orders uh, in fact match the MAR. So we're checking our five rights here. Um, the right patient is Chris, Chris McPherson. Um, he's 52 years old, 52 years old. Um, and the physician has ordered um, Benadryl or diphenhydramine, 25 milligrams per NG every six hours. Um, he has also ordered Dilantin, 125 suspension, 250 milligrams per NG once daily. And that is in fact um, correct on here. So we're gonna go ahead and prepare our medications. The um, second part of our first check is confirming that we do in fact have the right medications here. So Benadryl and Diphenhydramine are the same thing. Um, oftentimes it will even say that on the package, but you'd wanna know that with your drug cards, um, etc. The dose is 25 milligrams, so these are each a 25 milligram tablet. Um, the route is going to be per nasal gastric so we want to make sure that we can crush these then especially if it's a pill that we're talking about so you want to make sure that it's not enteric coated it's not a long acting or a contin medication um, and it's not something that's unsafe to crush just like a cytotoxic medication so um, we do happen to know that these are good to crush but you would want to make sure that that's okay um, the second medication that we'll be giving is Dilantin. So it's a Dilantin 125 is the name and it's a suspension. So that means we will have to shake it to disperse the medication throughout. Um, it is 125 milligrams per five mLs and the order is for 250 milligrams. So we will need 10 mLs. Um, and because this is a liquid, that's actually ideal for our NG tube um, delivery of meds. So um, it's kind of a good point to make that when you are giving meds through an NG, um, it's not a bad idea to ask the pharmacy team um, if anything can be changed to liquid because that's a lot um, a lot more beneficial as it is it helps prevent clogging of the tube with the the remnants of crushed pills um, but we will go over the process of crushing those pills now too so we'll start with our benadryl um, as we sort of figured out already we just need one of these so it's helpful if you can put it into the cap there And of course, we've washed our hands before starting. So um, if we did need to touch that um, capsule, we try to touch it um, as little as possible, um, but you can make sure your hands are clean. Um, and so now this is the Silent Night. It's the, probably the most common pill crusher. So we'll just go over how to crush it. In here, you put the, the pill or the tablet in the baggie here, and then you place it um, behind that pulverizer. And it helps if you sort of gently crush it first. It's sort of tempting to just want to like press it. If you do do that, you will create an indent in the bag and it kind of makes the pill um, remnants get stuck in there. So if you sort of just angle it and move that pill around in the bag while you're crushing, um, it kind of helps get a more even crush. Try not to talk and crush at the same time. So sort of little blows is a little bit um, more beneficial to just hammering it hard a couple times. You really want it to be a fine powder in there so that, um, again, it's not going to clog your tube, uh, hopefully. So then typically what I do is transfer it from these bags 
into a med cup. Give it a little flick to help. You want to get out as much um, of the medication remnants as you can for obvious reasons. You don't want to lose medication there because technically then they're not getting the full dose. Though um, it's kind of unavoidable at a certain point you will um, lose a little bit of medication in that powder that you can't necessarily um, clean out. Um, another option too is you could put water in the bag and sort of rinse it out. So we just have some tap water here um, to rinse out our bag. You can dump it in there too. Um, it didn't really get it all out of there, but that's okay. Um, so now we it's very important that we label this because it's um, hard to tell what it is at a certain point. So we'll just make our label. Um, so we have Chris McPherson, we have Benadryl, um, the dose is 25 milligrams and that's one tab worth. Um, so we've crushed it and it's in here. So we have date, time and our initials. So we'll put that aside. We're actually done now with the Silent Night. Um, so now we'll move on to our next medication on our MAR, which is the Dilantin. And again, it's a suspension, so you want to shake it really, really well to disperse that medication. Um, sometimes you can even see it collect at the bottom, um, but you don't, you don't want that. So um, for the 10 mLs that we need to get the 250 milligrams, we could pour it into a med cup and then um, get to eye level and visualize that. Um, but Another good idea for uh, 10 or less, you do, um, or for less than 10, excuse me, you would want to use a syringe, an oral syringe to measure. Um, you could use a smaller one than this if it was obviously a smaller amount. Um, but for 10 mLs, you could reasonably pour it. I like to use the syringe just because it uh, is a little more um, accurate. So we shake in, we're going to pour. Probably over pour just a little bit. Yep. And we're leaving our containers out still, just nearby. Um, so good thing to to remember. And we're gonna draw up our 10 mLs. And a little bit more because I do see the bubble in there. It's helpful too um, to tip your cup if you want to get that last little bit out into the corner. So once you have it all in there, it helps to pull back on your plunger, hold your syringe straight up, pull back on your plunger, make sure all the medication is in the barrel there. Look around for any bubbles, there actually aren't any. If there were, it's uh, you tap them hard with your pen right on the bubble um, and you can usually get them out. So now we'll just push up all the way to the top so we know that it's full to the top because now when we go to dump back out um, we know that no air will displace um, where where we're at for measuring wise so no bubble will come down and displace it so we can just you now push out to that 10 ml marking um, so we're at 10 we have 10 mls of our dilantin and now we're going to make a label for that dilantin as well so um, it's, uh, ooh, I'll just move this out of the way, Dilantin, two, so for Chris McPherson, the drug name is Dilantin, it's 250 milligrams, which is equivalent to 10 mLs, um, which we have here, and you want to put the date and your signature there at the bottom, date, time, and signature. So now we're ready to do our second check. Um, so we'll want to have those containers um, readily available, not put away. So. First we have uh, diphenhydramine, which is diphenhydramine or Benadryl. Um, the dose is 25 milligrams, so they're 25 milligram tablets. Benadryl, 25 milligrams. We only crushed one tab, so that's what we have written for volume, one tab. Um, the route is per nasogastric, so that's why we crushed it and um, tried to dilute it with water. Um, and he's going to be getting be getting it every six hours. So we are done our second check for the Benadryl. We can put this away now. For the Dilantin, um, we have the right drug, Dilantin, 125 um, is the name, suspension. So Dilantin 125, um, the dose, and we have Dilantin here. Uh, the dose is 250 milligrams. So um, 250 milligrams is written for a dose here and it's 10 mLs because it's 125 per five. And it, the route, again, is gonna be nasogastric. And we just wanna confirm with our syringe that we do in fact have 10 mLs and no obvious um, air bubbles in there displacing it. 
and he's gonna get it daily, so now is the time that it's due. So for this one, we can actually stick it onto our syringe, just somewhere where it doesn't um, occlude the markings, just with that little bit of the sticker. And now we're gonna approach our patient. So our patient happens to be here with us, which isn't typical, um, but we're gonna approach our patient, we're gonna talk to them, introduce ourselves, definitely do a safety check. Um, we're gonna ask him to confirm his identity. We're gonna check it with his wristband and make sure it's correct. We're gonna ask him if he has any allergies. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and do our third check with our MAR and our medications and our labels. Um, and then after that, we're ready to administer. So I'm kinda gonna skip that just to show the administration of it. Um, in a timely fashion here. So before um, doing anything with an NG tube, even though he had an x-ray confirmed placement, we wanna make sure again that it's in. So you'd wanna re-measure the tube and recheck that gastric contents, um, that gastric pH with your pH paper. Um, so we can just go ahead and measure it. I think we said it was and we would have documented it as that 65 centimeters, but we wanna reconfirm it because again, he went for x-ray um, and he moved around a bit. So we just wanna reconfirm that we are in fact at that um, 65 centimeter measurement. Um, and again, looking at the symptoms of the patient um, when, we're, when we're checking that aspirate and just in general. Um, something that you may see done, I, I hope not, but something that um, used to be practiced or common practice was to instill um, air and then auscultate with your stethoscope. So listen over the person's stomach area while you push in a bolus of air and you sort of hear a gurgle. And that has been um, confirmed through evidence-based uh, research to not be an accurate method of confirming placement. So you may still see people do that. Um, I think by and large, um, everyone has understood that that's not um, accurate uh, placement confirmation. So we tend not to do that anymore. And we definitely don't teach that anymore. So um, just so you know, if you do see it, you can sort of correct that practice. Um, so when you're gonna go ahead and give medications, you'd probably, you'd wanna wear gloves, again, especially when you're checking the um, aspirates there, because you're gonna come into contact with blood and body fluids. Again, washing your hands before. It's also a good idea to have with you, um, sometimes it'll be at the bedside already, but a labeled um, cup of tap water or container of tap water. Um, room temperature is not as good. Um, it's for flushing between the medications and after your medications. So we will go ahead. So again, we can use our enteral tip um, tube and we're gonna open up that top um, port and we're going to insert and we're going to instill the medication. Again, this is after we've confirmed placement. When we instill, we're monitoring the patient, making sure they're still comfortable. It's a good idea too to sort of kink off the tube when you remove your syringe so that you don't have um, the, back, the backup. And now we can do a little bit of tap water. You also wanna keep note, especially um, if the patient is on any sort of uh, fluid restriction, like we said, um, or accurate ins and outs, which often they are in hospital, um, you wanna ensure you're remembering how much you've um, put in. Um, now we're gonna go ahead with our Benadryl. Um, I like to sort of mix it up when I, as I draw it up. We might need some more water in there. We have about 30 mLs here with the, that Benadryl, and that's, that's a lot, really. So you'd wanna probably try to do less than that. You want to then move on to your tap water and instill some, some more tap water until um, the tube is clear and you've gotten all that medication in. So you can see why it's, it's a lot more helpful if the person is on um, liquid meds when they can be um, so that it helps prevent that clogging and that remnants of um, the medication. So um, once you're done with getting all your medication instilled, you'd wanna flush the tube really well, like we said, and then record on the ins and outs balance sheet how much um, fluid you, you did need to give them for medications and including flushes and medications. So that's sort of the basics of um, crushing meds and giving liquid meds um, into an NG tube. And then we would, of course, document on our MAR. Um, and 
Yeah, make sure our patient's doing okay.